Well, we made it through section two. We're on to section three. So this is de a deployment, and it's 23% of the CompTIA Cloud Plus uh, exam. Once again, we're doing the the 003 one. So uh, I'll link to the exam objectives down below. We're way up here. 3.1. So given a scenario, integrate components into a cloud solution. Okay. Yeah, right here. Sweet. Let's get started. So subscription services, there's file subscriptions. Um, you can also do communications. So you can subscribe to email, voice over IP, messaging, um, collaboration. So when it comes to uh, things like Slack, uh, how are you going to get uh, work with your team? Uh, what about virtual desktop infrastructure? Do you really need to maintain a desktop for each person? Uh, can they just SSH into it? That you're still going to need an access device. Uh, but can you manage your data in your subscriptions to the different um, applications that you need at your your location by using a, a virtual desktop? Directory and identity services. So how are you keeping track of who's there, um, what they have access to? And then there's the cloud resources. Of course, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. We've talked a little bit about this. and I'm going to uh, continue to bring this up. I really like this pizza as a service because it really helps people understand it. So for this exam, it looks like you only need to know the first version. I, uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. Okay. Uh, but there is a lot more and you should be familiar with it. In fact, they talk about them, but they just don't put it in the as a service model. And since I've shared this pizza as a service with you before, let's actually pull up two more resources. Okay. Uh, so here is uh, everything as a service, infrastructure, SaaS, and, and PaaS. So, and it'll, list it in ways that an IT person would kind of understand, okay? Um, and that splits them up. So if you notice, data is always in the realm of something that is managed by the person, but provider supplied, this keeps going up, okay? Now, this does not list functions as a service, containers as a service, so I did put that here. Uh, this one does have it here. Um, it, so function of service right here. Um, so I'll link these two articles as well uh, in this video. Let's get back to the slides. Sweet. Um, hopefully by going through those other resources, you'll really start to understand things. Uh, so provisioning resources, should you provision them or not? So when you're looking at uh, what you need, you think about compute, the CPU, the memory, how much CPU, how much memory you need, how much storage you need, what type of storage do you need? Does it need to be fast? Uh, do you need a lot of it, but it can be slow? Is it for archival? Um, those are all things that you can ask. Now, if you just had it in house, you might not have choices. But when you're doing an a la carte type thing with um, as a service, you get more options. And so you can use what's best for the application. Uh, then you also have network as a service uh, in the in the, these cloud models. And you can actually uh, pay for what you use. So you can use as more or less bandwidth. And these uh, resources, the computers that you provision, are set up to be able to handle a certain amount of load. And you might have to scale, uh, scale it um, up or down, uh, depending on what you need, or out. You can always scale out as well. Um, but maybe you don't even want to manage that at all. And then you can just go serverless. That's talking about function as a service. Uh, in AWS, this is Lambda. Uh, but cloud, uh, Google Cloud and Azure also have functions or uh, that they do, uh, functions as a service. So deploying. When you deploy the virtual machines and custom images, how do you do it? Do you create templates uh, or are the, is it more um, recipes? Because uh, you can do it kind of both ways. OS templates, solution templates, do you 
uh, and how do you keep track of access I the, the identity access management there um, and also the identity of that system what should that system have access to uh, all these cloud solutions have ways to help manage that access Caner, containers uh, how do you configure the variables uh, or the secrets so that's kind of where you can put passwords um, so that they don't have to be actually on the file system but they'd still be in memory so uh, it protects them a little bit more they're still available for really good hackers but it's a better way of doing it so it's not on the file system um, when you get additional load how do you scale uh, up or down if you get less load uh, do you really want to pay for a system that's not being used just scale it down to almost nothing uh, until it's needed um, and how are you going to validate that it's working? Um, especially when you have these auto scaling. When you scale something up, how do you know that it's ready and available to accept uh, load? So anyway, uh, this is great. I think uh, deployment is an awesome one. We're plugging away, and I hope to see you in the next video.